hello everyone in this video i'm going to show you how to digitize farm plots and extract raster statistics for those farm plots so i will take you through multiple steps to achieve this target so the first step is to create a new shape file in utm38 north for the plots inside your roi boundary and define some attributes so we'll define two attributes one is id which is the default one and we'll define another attribute called plot underscore id so let's see how it's done in qgis so you can see here a new project with meander obligation scheme boundary on and you can see that the utm is already set to 38 north and here i'm going to add the ROI boundary where I want to digitize fields. So I will go to the folder where my ROI boundaries are. So I opened ROI phi here. I will change the symbology. I don't need the fill. So I'll make it transparent. Change the symbology to something dark. And now we need a base map to digitize. So in this uh, session, I'm going to show you how to digitize over a Google satellite background map. So let's go to web, quick map services, Google satellite. But the background, the base map can be any other base map which you desire. So before I start, one, important step is to save the project because you're going to digitize plots it's better to save your work as you go so here i'm going to save the project so digitize let's save now i will zoom to the roi and i you can decide where you want to start digitizing but i will I will digitize from this corner. Now, before digitize start before starting digitization, the first step is to create a new vector file where you will save all your digitized plots. So I'm going to create a new shape file, new shape file layer. I will give the name as ROI five underscore fields. It's the name which you can select. And the geometry type is polygon. I will select the coordinate reference system as UTM 38 North. And here you can see in the fields list, in the attributes, the ID is already there. Now, as we said, I want to add another attribute which is called plot underscore ID. Plot underscore id i want it to be a text data so i will not change it and i will say add to fields list so the second attribute is added so like that you can add as many attributes as you want uh, depending on design of your digitization so for me for time being i am happy with two attributes so i'll say okay for me such uh, that shape file existed so i just overwrote uh, that override that file in your case it may be a new file so now you can see i have a empty new shape file i will again change the symbology because i'm not i don't need three here so i'll make it transparent and give a bright color and apply okay so again, it is empty, so you don't see anything. Now, before we start digitization, we have to uh, we have to set some options or settings. So those options are uh, we can digitize plots with common boundaries, and one of the options are snapping option, and also the scale at which you want to digitize. So. 
for to switch on the snapping options why do you need snapping options because most of these boundaries most of these fields will have common boundaries so for example here this will be a common boundary between this one and this one so in that case you don't need two lines there you need a common boundary so to do that you have to switch on snapping in QGIS so I have a snapping toolbar here this one if you don't see it in your menu you can right click here and enable snapping toolbar so this is my enable snapping option I will enable it and I will enable the snapping only for the active layer so that means whichever layer is active so in this case now roi phi underscore fields is the active layer so i want snapping to be enabled only on active layer i want snapping to work both on vertex the corners and also on the segment um, a threshold of 12 pixel that means the snapping will happen uh, if the digitization uh, the cursor is within 12 pixels so it will snap to vertex or the nearest segment I'm going to switch on the topological editing switch on uh, snapping on intersection and I'm going to switch on tracing so that it's easy for us to uh, digitize the common boundaries so these are the snapping options and also I'm going to fix a scale of uh, 1500 enter and I wanted I'm going to digitize at this scale so it is recommended to digitize depending on uh, the details of the digitization the, the field boundaries are quite detailed so I will give a, uh, a higher scale here and I will lock this scale so that the scale won't change in between so the scale is set the snapping options are set now I will start digitization so to start this day session i will make this new layer active here in the layer manager and toggle editing after toggle editing to add new polygon feature you have to click on this icon add polygon feature click on click here and then start digitization so you can see i'm doing a very rough digitization here because it's for demonstration purpose so I took this whole area as one field or one farm. When you want to finish the data session, you have to right click. Then the options, the attributes will come. So I give the ID as one and plot ID as ROI five underscore one. It's just a meaningful ID, which means okay, it's in ROI 5 and it's the float number 1. So, okay, so you can see that the first uh, plot is digitized. Um, now I'm going to digitize this plot, but here I want this area, this line to be common. So, you can already see a purple color. Um, points where the digitization tool will snap automatically because the snapping options are on so I'm going to start the next one from here and snap the options when the square is shown as the tracing is also on here it will trace this line so I will click wherever the snapping option or the vertex is available so it's showing the snapping option wherever the vertex is available or a node is available. So I'll do that. Okay, now I went a bit uh, ahead. I wanted to turn from here. So if you want to undo, you can use the backspace. So backspace will undo the last three these points. So I backspaced to here and then I in direction so when you digitize just make sure that you are doing it a bit more accurately so 
I'll give you give here the next attributes. So you can see that this uh, boundary is common. There are no two lines here. There's only one single line representing the common boundary between this one and this one. So these are my five fields. I will unlock the scale so that I can zoom out and see it. Um, time being, I'm happy with this. So I will toggle editing. And it's asking, it will ask whether you want to save the edits. Yes. So I have a layer with five fields of data. Now let's open the attribute table of the uh, fields. And you can see that the ID and plot ID is uh, already saved. So once you have the uh, digitized fields ready, the next step you may want to do is to extract some statistics over those fields. Uh, for example, from the seasonal evapotranspiration map which you obtained from uh, SEBA. Um, this could be for uh, as, as part of computing some of the performance indicators, irrigation performance indicators. And you can follow this step and you uh, continue to do with other relevant raster maps by replicating this step. So in the QGIS, uh, now I have opened a evapotranspiration map. This is uh, annual evapotranspiration map for 2018-90. Now I want to know for these fields. You can see that for each field cover multiple pixels. So I want to know the mean and standard deviation of evap annual evapotranspiration map for each field. And later we will uh, calculate or compute coefficient of variation uh, for each field. So let's see uh, how to how this can be done. Uh, so if you open the attribute table of the fields, you see that there are only two attributes now. To do this, uh, we can use a module called zonal statistics. Uh, in the raster layer, you can select the raster layer on which you want to compute statistics. So it is ETS about in our case. And vector layer containing zones is ROI5 underscore fields, which you just uh, digitized. Now, we, you can give a prefix. In my case, it is ETA2018-90 underscore. And which are the statistics you want to uh, Okay, I'm going to give it a PT19. And which are the statistics you want to compute? So I want uh, the mean and the standard deviation. You can select any others. As you can see, there are many other options the minimum, maximum, the range, etc. And I will run this module. It is done. Now I can go to this attribute table of the digitized layer. And now you can see that there is a column representing the mean values, and there's a column representing the standard deviation value. In shapefile, there is a limitation for uh, the number of letters for the attribute name. I think it's 13. Uh, so that is why the name is not complete. So it will cut. So you have to give the prefix accordingly. So this you you have the mean and standard deviation evaporator, annual evapotranspiration now for each field. Now, for example, if you select one of them, you can see for this field the mean is one two three eight m month per year and standard deviation is fifty three. Now you want to calculate coefficient of variation. Coefficient of variation can be calculated using the formula standard deviation divided by mean. So let's see how to do that. So you need another column which uh, gives you the coefficient of variation. So I will create a new column here. New field. I will say ETA 1890 CV. Variation, decimal number, length can be 5, position 23. 
Okay, here. Now I'll go to field calculator and I will say please update an existing field which is our CV and uh, please apply the formula in the fields standard deviation divided by mean. So these are the fields already available. So we want to do for each row we want to do standard deviation divided by mean. Say OK, and you can see that the values are updated here. So the coefficient of variation for each field is computed here. Switch of the editing, then it will ask whether to save, yes, and that's it. So you have a attribute table with all the required information, and you may have to compute many more depending on your requirement. Now let's quickly see how to export this fields table, uh, table of this layer into Excel sheet. So you can right click on this ROA file of fields, export save features as. So here instead of shape file, I will select comma separated value, CSV file is a text file separated by comma, um, CRS doesn't matter. And uh, yeah, and the rest you can leave uh, default, but I don't want this to be added into a map because it's not a map file. And I'll give a file name as field underscore stats and run it. It's already done. I'll go to the folder, I can see where that file is created. I can double click and open it in Excel. When you open it, it's all the data will be in one column because it's a comma separated. So you can go to data, texture columns, delimited, select comma instead of path, then it will split into different columns. Next, finish. So you have your data cleaned here. You can save this file as a new Excel sheet. Um, you can also change these column names into more meaningful one and do further analysis. So that's how you will digitize fields from a Google satellite background, extract some raster statistics, and export that into Excel sheet. Thank you.